Let's now talk about quarter wave matching layers. In the first lecture, we talked about how the interface between two dissimilar materials will give rise to a uh, insignificant ultrasound echo reflection, which is detrimental to ultrasound resolution. The best way to minimize the unwanted reflection is to use a quarter wave matching layer via the equation as follows. Z of the matching layer equals the square root of the product of the impedance of the transducer and the impedance of the soft tissue. In modern day ultrasound systems, multiple matching layers are used for efficient transmission over a wide range of frequencies. Let's do a question to test your knowledge. A medical ultrasound transducer supplier plans to use a piezoelectric element with an impedance Z of 20 times 10 to the 6 rails. If Z of soft tissue is 1.8 times 10 to the 6, what is the best value of Z for the matching layer? Is the response A, 1.1 times 10 to the 6 rails? Is it B, 6 times 10 to the 6 rails? Is it C, 3.6 times 10 to the 6 rails? Or finally, is it D? 18.2 times 10 to the 6 rails. You may pause this video to work on your answer and continue for the correct response and explanation. The correct answer is B, 6 times 10 to the 6 rails. Recall the matching equation for the quarter wave plate. Z match is the square root of the Z of the transducer times Z of the soft tissue, which is 20 times 10 to the 6 times 8, 1.8 times 10 to the 6. 36 times 10 to the 12 square root equals 6 times 10 to the 6 rails. The spectral pattern of an ultrasound pulse has two key characteristics. The first one is its resonant frequency, which is a characteristic of its piezoelectric element and configuration. The second element is the frequency bandwidth, which is a consequence of the pulse duration. This cartoon illustrates the ultrasound pulse in time and its effect in the frequency domain, which has characteristic resonant frequency corresponding to the period, periodicity of the pulse, and also a characteristic bandwidth, which is about the resonant frequency, the width of which tells you the amplitude over the gain spectrum. Q is the Q factor, which is defined as this resonant frequency that we talked about in the previous slide over the bandwidth. Q is associated with ringing. If you have a lot of ringing, you have low bandwidth and a high resonant frequency. The higher the bandwidth, the lower the Q. On the other hand, the smaller the bandwidth, the higher the Q. In diagnostic ultrasound, low Q or high bandwidth is desirable. So if you think about it that way, you want high bandwidth for optimum ultrasound resolution and low Q. Bandwidth versus pulse duration. The pulse shown is characteristic of a long duration, which yields a large Q, small bandwidth, which we talked about earlier is a high ringing uh, recipe. If you have a medium duration pulse, you get a medium bandwidth and medium Q. And as you may surmise, we talked about a ultra short pulse as shown in this last line, you are talking about a frequency characteristic of a very large bandwidth associated with a small Q. Again, let's emphasize the fact that for ultrasound transducers, you want the highest bandwidth possible surrounding your resonant frequency. Now the backing material, which we talked about in the beginning of the lecture, the purpose of the backing material is to dampen the ultrasound signal so that the acoustic output pulse time duration is shortened. Now the reduction of the pulse time gives you a higher frequency performance as well as a reduction of the transducer backing reflections. On the other hand, the downside is that your acoustic signal itself has decreased signal strength. Here's a cartoon of a ultrasound output with no backing material. If you add this yellow thick layer behind the transducer element, with the backing material you have significantly reduced pulse duration as shown with the decreased ringing and that is desirable. Let's talk about spatial resolution. Spatial resolution refers to the ability to distinguish two reflectors from one another. It talks about the minimum separation that you can detect and there are three categories axial, lateral, or slice thickness plane. 
Let's talk about each one in series. Axial spatial resolution. This describes the minimum reflector spacing along the axis of travel. It's based on the premise that speed of sound is finite, and outgoing ultrasound pulse will take time to reach the reflector and also time to return as an echo signal. Therefore, the shorter the pulse duration, the smaller the resolvable axial spacing. Here is a cartoon of a pulse with a signal of three cycles, period of t. So pulse duration is c times t. If the time gap between echo signals of the reflectors is greater than the pulse duration, then they can, they, then they can be resolved. Since the frequency is the inverse of the period, pulse duration can be defined as c, the number of pulses, divided by the frequency. Therefore, the higher the transistor frequency f, the shorter the pulse duration. And then the smaller the pulse duration, the better is the axial resolution. Example. Calculate the pulse duration of an ultrasound signal with five pulses, each with a period of 10 microseconds. Using the equation on the previous slide, you know that the frequency f is 1 over t. 1 over 10 microseconds gives you a frequency of 0.1 megahertz. Now plug this in into the equation for pulse duration, which is c over the frequency. You have five pulses over each pulse of a 0.1 frequency, and you have 50 microseconds as your pulse duration. Again, the smaller the pulse duration, the better your axial resolution. The next series of slides talk about the cartoon describing this axial spatial resolution concept. Here you have two blue reflectors separated by spacing z, and you have an ultrasound pulse that is given out by the transducer. Axial resolution has also been described as one-half the spatial pulse length, where SPL, spatial pulse length, equals the speed of sound times the pulse duration. Just like you can talk about ultrasound pulses in the time domain, you can also talk about it in the spatial domain. Regardless, let's follow this pulse as it traverses towards the first reflector. As it reaches the first reflector, the ultrasound pulse will give off a transmitted component in addition to the reflected component. Let's follow the path of each component. The reflected component will return to the transducer, whereas the, transducer, the transmitted component will reach for the second reflector upon which it will bounce back and reflect it back towards the transducer. The leading pulse here reaches the transducer before any of the portion of the transmitted uh, pulse returns, and therefore you can resolve the two reflectors. For the spacing of z that is shown between the two blue lines, you can resolve this because the separation z is greater than one-half the spatial pulse length. On the other hand, if you say that the separation z now is less than one-half the spatial pulse length, as you can see by the close, moving closer together of the two reflectors to a z, which is much smaller than SPL over 2, now do you think that you can resolve the spacing of these two reflectors? Let's follow the path of the transducer's signals. As it moves towards the first reflector, you have the reflected pulse going back to the transducer, and then the transmitted pulse that keeps going to the second reflector. As you follow the pulses, the reflected pulse is now bouncing back from the second reflector, and it catches up to the first reflected pulse. And since there is overlap between the two pulses when it gets back to the transducer, the conclusion is that the two echo pulses cannot be resolved, and therefore the two reflectors separated by the spacing z cannot be resolved, because z is less than SPL over 2. Let's do a question. Give the correct relationship between the pulse duration, the axial resolution, and frequency bandwidth. Is it A? Long, improve, and wider? Is it B? Short, improve, narrow? Is it C? You have longer pulse duration, you get worse axial resolution and narrower bandwidth? Or well, finally, is it D? You get short, worse, or wider? You may pause the video to consider your 
correct response and continue to get the right answer and explanation. The correct answer is C, long, worse, and narrow. Longer pulse duration leads to worse axial resolution and narrow frequency bandwidth. Longer PD gives worse resolution, decreased axial resolution and bandwidth. Shorter PD will give better performance, that is, increased axial resolution and higher bandwidth.